Hello and welcome to this section of the MATLAB Tutor. Um, we're going to talk about generating vectors with random numbers. Sometimes you'll be uh, running a code or writing a program or doing some problem where you need a listing of numbers that is randomly generated and then you can use that random list of numbers to run through your code and, and, and perform different calculations. So there's lots of times when you might need the computer to actually generate random numbers. So MATLAB has a command built in for that and you might guess it's called RAND. Okay. Now if you just typed in if you just type in RAND like this, it's going to give you a random number, a single random number. Right? So if you keep entering this command in over and over, it's going to give you a random number. I should say it's a random number between 0 and 1. Um, and that's typically how it's all done with computers. If you need a random number between, you know, 1 and, and 10 or something, then you would just say uh, random times 10 and then you would have a random number between 1 and 10. If you needed a random number between you know uh, 1 and 100 or 1 and 1000 then you would just multiply rand times 1000 and you would get your random number between between 1 and 1000. So random numbers are, are easily generated in MATLAB. Now if you need to generate a vector with a list of random numbers it's also very easy to do. Random and you need to open parentheses and tell MATLAB you want a vector with one row and let's say seven columns. So when you when you write things like this, the first number is the rows and the second is the column. So it's it's rows comma columns. So when you do that, you get a listing of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements uh, there. And again, if you needed a vector uh, that had you know six random elements, you know. You can do this calculation again and again, and you'll see each time you're getting different random numbers all the time. And again, just like before, if you needed um, a random vector, you know, with random numbers between one and ten, then you would just multiply that times ten, and then every time you do this calculation, you're going to get a random number randomly generated between one and ten. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now, by the way, when I say random number like this. 1 comma 7. I'll just give you a little bit of a sneak peek. Right now we're talking about vectors which are just sort of one dimensional, you know, one row entities. But you know, you guys all know about matrices. We're going to get to matrices very soon. If in here you put something like 2 comma 7 or let's do 3 comma 7, this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns. So when you do that you'll get a matrix which will have basically three rows, seven columns, and they'll all be randomized. So that's a very useful thing you might you might uh, typically need to do to generate and to to do that. So if you wanted to generate one instance of a uh, random guy just to use in subsequent calculations, then you could say random one comma four. So I'm going to generate a vector with four elements randomly, and I'm going to store it in a position vector. So then I can use the um, the uh, entity vector. I can use it in all subsequent calculations. It's randomized. That's fine. So there's 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 cases when you might need to use that. Now there's other commands that you can use. Uh, just in passing here, I'll tell you to to generate um, to generate matrices. One of them is uh, one called rand perm. It stands for random perm permutation. Remember, uh, permutation is basically a listing of elements where you can't repeat the elements. So if you do random a uh, rand perm like this with 6 as the argument. In fact, you can see MATLAB's trying to help us here. As soon as we put the parentheses, it starts telling you uh, random perm parentheses in. So if you put a number in there, what's going to happen is it's going to generate six, a vector with 6 elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have uh, that guy. And when it generates it, it's going to generate a permutation of those six elements. So the ordering in this case is 2, 6, 1, 5, 4, 3. If I run the calculation again, I'm going to get another permutation, 6, 3, 5. You can think of these as lottery numbers, basically. This is like a, this is like almost like a lottery number generator. So random rand perm is basically when you when you have occasion to create a vector that's a permutation of some numbers. So I could I could store it in vector 2 and I could say, okay, generate a random permutation of, you know, the elements 1 to 10. And it will do that for me. It'll be random each time. When you would have occasion to use this, it depends on your particular problem. Uh, I'm just trying to give you examples of when MATLAB can generate these matrices for you rather than you having to go off and try to make up some numbers yourself. Um, there are also a couple of other things that you may have occasion to use in your programs. One is if you want to create a vector that's initialized with all ones, then you would have one row 
and let's say six columns. So you have to do the, the row comma column thing there. And you can see it's going to fill that vector out with all ones. So if you wanted to if you wanted to create a vector called initialize ones with five elements. Uh, the one here, by the way, is not, not because we're putting ones here. It's just that this is one row, five columns. So there you go. So now we have a vector with all ones. If I wanted to create another vector and fill it with all zeros, I put zeros, uh, one comma eight. That means one row, eight columns. And then I have a vector of all zeros, which are then stored in my vector test. So you might say, when would you ever need to do this? Well, it depends on your particular problem. Sometimes you need to have these initialized vectors uh, there. Now, when you have eight elements, it's not a big problem for you to just in manually define it. But if you, if you, you know, what if you have, you know, a vector with, you know, 266, um, 266 elements in it, and you wanted to put zeros in every element, that would be a real pain in order to type it in there. So you just create the vector like that. Now I put a semicolon to suppress the output because the real output looks like something like this. Zeros for all of those elements. Okay, so now I've cleared the screen and what I want to do now is just kind of show you, uh, even though this is kind of dipping our toes into the next couple of sections on matrices, but a minute ago we were doing things like ones and doing one comma four. That's creating a vector with uh, one, basically one row and four columns. But much like I showed you before, this is going to extend itself to matrices. If you wanted to make a, a four by four matrix of all ones, then you just put four rows, four columns, and then you have your matrix. The same thing applies to to starting a matrix with a matrix with all zeros in it, um, the same way we've done here. Now I want to close the section out by showing you how to sort a vector in ascending order. Sometimes you have an occasion to do that. So if I have a vector, let's just say, uh, we'll call it vector R, and I have a bunch of different values. I can have negative 88, 0, 2, 5, 2.5, negative 4, something like that. So I have several values in here. Right? And then for whatever reason, this is raw data that I've collected. Maybe I'd like to sort it in ascending order. So there's a function for that, sort R, and that's all you have to do. Hit enter. The, uh, this does not store anything in back into the vector. It just takes the output and it sorts it in ascending order. So if you were doing one of those random permutations or something, I'll say uh, vector Y equals random, um, uh, random permutation of nine elements, let's say then what's going to happen here is I've generated a vector with nine elements with a random ordering of the elements because it's all it's all random permutation, right? Well, if I take sort and apply it to what I've just done here, then it should take the output and rearrange it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are these elements rearranged in ascending order. So this is useful when you have a lot of data you're pulling in from some file, and then maybe you want to sort it in ascending order for whatever reason so that you can look at it. Um, so then you could apply the sort function to that. I hope this section has been useful for you. Go off and uh, play around with it yourself. Make sure you can generate these vectors and let MATLAB do the heavy lifting for you when you need to generate a vector of random numbers or permutation of numbers or something of that nature.